the four schools being transformed into dynamic TVET centers, are namely Urge Secondary, Grand Rivier Secondary, PI Secondary, and the Stanley John Odlum Secondary Schools. With the transformation of these schools, the Ministry of Education is seeking to achieve several goals, including providing a dynamic student-centered curriculum for diverse and inclusive education, establishing a work-based approach aligning education with industry needs at local and international levels, enhancing human resource capacity and resilience through skill-based learning, and offering varied qualifications with multiple entry points to access these qualifications. The thrust of the TVET project, according to Education Officer for TVET, Delthia Natrum, is creating the groundwork for a highly skilled workforce that can spur innovation and sustainable growth across a range of industries by investing in the professional development of secondary school students. She spoke following a tour of some of the schools earmarked to become TVET-centered schools. The students who will be attending those schools or who are already attending some of these schools, um, they will be on a career pathway. So there will be solid um, support for them, both in terms of their training needs, training them towards um, occupational areas, as well as an emphasis on developing the whole child because you want to put out there the ideal worker um, who is imbued both with um, hard skills as well as those transferable skills that will allow them to not just attain jobs but to retain jobs. One of the fundamental aims of these centers is to strengthen industry collaborations and connect educational and training needs with the community and the formal education system. Ms. Natrum says her unit as well as the plant and equipment team have been monitoring the works which are ongoing to ensure they meet the required specifications for the various TVET courses which will be introduced to the schools because you know we are responding to industry standards and so we want to ensure that the rooms meet the, the training needs of both the facilitators and the students. Um, some of the rooms we've seen, we're quite excited. Um, areas like cosmetology, barbering, um, we saw some new kitchens um, for, that can be used for pastry and cake baking and decorating. So we're pretty excited about some of the works. Director of Works with the Ministry, Hubert Hart, says apart from the usual challenges associated with construction work, his team is happy with the work accomplished thus far. We have had our challenges along the way in coordinating the different contractors, the different components of the work, like, you know, the electrical and the different um, rooms, the different purposes for which those rooms are designed. So that took quite a bit of coordination to get it going right, but I think at the moment from this recent visit, we are looking very good and I'm very pleased with the progress we've made so far. Mr. Hart says his team has taken into consideration the durability aspect of the accomplished work to ensure they are utilized by the students for years to come. We know that in recent years we've been facing some significant challenges with termites and termite infestation. We have tried to move away from using timber and using um, PVC board and concrete together. These are both uh, materials that are highly resistant to any type of termite infestation. So we have really focused on materials that will have high durability and that can withstand high and frequent use, particularly in this case by students. Ministry officials say with upgraded workshops and industry-led curriculum, highly skilled teaching staff and a focus on career-centered learning, students will be empowered and equipped for today's job market and beyond with new capabilities to pursue entrepreneurial initiatives and further studies in specific occupational areas. From the Communications Unit of the Department of Education, Innovation and Vocational Training, I am Chris Satney reporting.